That's a big one. That's a big one. No, it ain't. It's just a big smallmouth. What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. Today we are practicing for the BFL and tomorrow is the BFL. I don't know how much filming I'll be able to do because it is supposed to rain later part of today and it's going to do storm tomorrow during the BFL. But we're going to go out here, been out here pre-practicing for the past couple of weeks. Been getting on a little bit of a bite here and there, but we're going to go out here today see how we can catch them. Hopefully we'll uh, We'll find a little bit more something for us for tomorrow. New BFL season starts now. Thank you guys for tuning in. And let's go catch some fish. This should not be this tough. I ain't got a first bite and I've been out here for almost three hours. Gum straightened everything out on the spinnerbait. Not even a keeper. Well, just caught one. Not even a keeper on the spinnerbait. Alright, guys, midday update. It's actually noon right now. Uh, practice sucks. Not gonna lie, I've only caught one fish. Uh, granted, I have spent, I'd say, at least a quarter to a third of this morning idling. So, obviously, when you're idling, you're not catching fish, but I'm not seeing a whole lot of what I would like. But I don't know. Um, talked to some others, they said it's tough too. But I'm gonna idle around a little bit more. Uh, try to find some something on the bank. Uh, the problem is there's not any wind right now. And on these clear body of water, you know, wind helps out a ton, especially when you're shallow fishing. So, I don't know, we're gonna keep on looking around. Uh, hopefully, uh, <laughs> the tournament tomorrow goes a lot better than practice so far. Well, that practice was terrible. I don't even know what to do tomorrow. To be honest with you, I guess I'm just gonna go fish off some history. Uh, was where I was catching them scoping, but other than that, I'm just gonna go fishing. I hope I get five bites that can cut me a check. I'm pretty disappointed in practice. To be honest with you, caught two fish. That's not good. Y'all saw the one on the spinner bait, and then it started to rain, and I caught one scoping around. So, and it was probably two and a quarter. Two and a half is really, really fat. But, I don't know, man. That's, I'm very, very disappointed in my practice, to be honest with you. Um, I figured it would have been better than that. Granted, I was in the part of the lake that I haven't had good pre-practices. So, hopefully, something turns around for the better. So, good Lord willing, we'll catch us a limit and it won't be so bad. The only thing that gives me hope is that there's gonna be a lot of wind tomorrow and wind on the, this body of water helps out tremendously. It is gonna hurt the scoping bite because wind is blowing right now and they're expecting 13 mile an hour winds so you know it's gonna get nasty out there. So we'll definitely need some prayers for safety on the water and everything and just go out and have the most fun we can with the, the worst practice I've had in a long time. I already talked to my co-angler. He knows we'll be scoping a little bit. I told him I'm sorry in advance, but hopefully I can make it up to him and uh, we can catch limits and stuff. I did tell him about the practice not being all that great, so he's expecting not to do good. 
just like I'm expecting not to give, do good. Unfortunately, but that is fishing. But we are boat 20 for tomorrow, and hopefully we can catch them. We, hopefully we can get on a couple of decent spots first thing at least. Um, boat 20 helps out quite a bit for that first flight so we're doing it at 3 p.m. blasting off at 7 but the first BFL of the year starts tomorrow on Norris Lake guys stay tuned and good Lord willing we'll do pretty decent in this one God almighty. <laughs> yeah, he hit it three times. There's, there's four or five of them there. How's, the, how's one bite the tail off in a last tag? <laughs> no, they're probably two pounders. <sighs> Bit the daggum tail off my last tag. How's that happen? God almighty. I looked at that freaking. Nah, he ain't very big. Rig. I don't even know if he'll make it or not. I look at that fish that jumped out there and. Probably. Or 14, 7 8. Fourteen and a half. Good. Yeah. He probably got light line. Oh, you're good. You're good. If you don't care, throw that. Uh, that super glue on the floor. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Now if he if he barely touches, he's short. Just let you know that Skeeter bump board. It cost me a check in a Chick a couple years ago. Oh, tight line. I've had some decent days on it, but. Oh, down here? Yeah, down here. Shoot, man, it's... Used to, it used to be obsolete because you'd catch a bunch of 16, 17 inches. But now, it's... If they're 15 inches, it... That's a big one. It ain't that big, but... <laughs> yeah, he's, that's, that, was, that was my bad. <laughs> that's a little bit better one. And that might be right at two. Oh, you're good, man. That was that was my fault too. I was just holding them there. Like, Thanks for the net. I don't think I need to measure him. He's healthy. Yeah, that fish had me worried for a split second. That was a fish. He might make it. He'll be close. Take it over in just a sec. Did you get it? Take it over in just a sec. He might make it. Oh, 
Oh yeah. You break it off? No. Oh. Big time. I said I missed them big time. That not there is probably catchable. This one is uh he's in twenty five foot. That's a big one. If it's a bass. Ain't as big as I thought he was, but solid fish. Yep. Best one so far. Yeah, I didn't see any more with them, but go ahead and keep on casting. That don't mean anything. They could suck up off the bottom at times. All right. I don't necessarily hammered it, but he came up and he he committed pretty quick. I didn't have to. Hell yeah. There's another one over there. Yeah. He ain't very big, but he made my limit fish. There's another one. Might just need a little bit of a ripple in the water. Who knows? He was out in there too. I'm not seeing him, but he was like right in there about 40, 50 foot. Yeah. I don't even know if he'll make it. Be close. He'll probably be the first one to go though. Put your life jacket up here. Yep. He's the smallest one, that's for sure though. Fifteen and a quarter. The sun might need to come up a little bit more. Who knows? It's hard to tell. That stripe right there. No, it ain't. That's such a big smallmouth. Oh. There's, there's a bunch of them there, dude. Yeah, I mean, a bunch.
Say that again. Oh yeah. I gotta go to Douglas tomorrow. Douglas. Uh, practicing for one. Yeah. He just swapped at it. I'm hooked in the neck. Cody Seabury, five bass fishing as a boater. Says he's got a big bass. Gonna take the lead of 14 pounds, even 14, even. Pick the big fish out of there. And that smallmouth weighs three pounds and one ounce. Need a three one. All right, guys. So as you all saw, we had 14 even, which was good enough for 19th place. Knocked out a top 20 on the first BFL. And after the practice I had, I will definitely take it. Unfortunately, the GoPro died on me and I didn't feel like switching the batteries because it literally rained hard for the last two to three hours of the day and that's when i actually cold up three times i caught three three pounders back to back to back uh it was pretty awesome i found a place where they were feeding and i actually i think i found like a little secret color i would say um i wouldn't say a secret color but i found the color that they were actually wanting to eat i wish i would have had it on gopro because it was actually pretty awesome uh, unfortunately, as you all saw, I did lose two fish. One of them I know would have helped me. It was at least a three pounder. Um, it was one of the larger fish I hooked that day and um, it would have got rid of like a two and a quarter pounder, two and a half pounder. But the weights were really tight. They caught them a lot better than I expected. Um, I think from, I finished 19th with 14 even. I want to say like seventh place was 15 even. So. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of places. It's 12 places within a pound. So Every ounce mattered in this tournament. Unfortunately, I did lose that one good one. I lost another one Never saw it, but it was a good size blob on live scope But I did zoom in on my depth finder a couple of times where I could and y'all could actually see it somewhat Unfortunately rain kind of you know made it a little bit harder for me to film swap batteries and stuff like that Real quick, I'm gonna run down what I caught these fish on for you guys and the little deal that I found that I think is the reason why they started biting a little bit better. All right, so as you guys saw, the workhorse, or what I actually got my initial limit on for the most part, and I caught several fish on, was the stealth rig. This rig right here has actually been a big player for me here lately. Um, it's gotten a little bit tougher the last couple weeks, and I don't know if that's just because we've had a lot of warm trends, but that rig right there is actually about to release to the public next week from the time you guys are seeing this video so make sure you click the link down below it'll take you to the website y'all can order it i don't know exactly how many he's got but i heard it's like quite a bit like they actually have some left over from like i think they have like over 300 pre-orders right now so they actually have some left over but if you guys want to make sure you get one please go check out the link below check out the stealth rig I'm telling you, it's the most durable rig out there, bar none, and it's more of like a finesse style, so I feel like you can get a couple more bites on it. But I had that on 8th ounce heads, and I was throwing 3.3 Kitex. I started off initially with a homemade head, 3 sixteenths, with a uh, Elastec style bait. The 3.5 version, I like it on whenever you're targeting smallmouth, because a smallmouth, they tend to eat a little bit smaller bait. And the 3 sixteenths, it was because earlier in the day there was no wind and i felt like they, those fish were a little bit more spooky so the 316s wasn't as more as loud and as intrusive whenever it hit the water but later on those fish they kind of moved down a little bit so i actually switched to an angler tungsten quarter ounce again both of these heads have the natural eye i think especially in smallmouth fisheries those eyes help out a lot on getting more bites but i had to switch to the natural shad color uh, Yamamoto scope shad and I feel like because this, this natural shad color is like a smoky gray with a little bit of gold flake in it gold and silver flake in it 
I feel like with it being overcast, those fish could see that darker lure, that darker presentation a little bit better. And I'm telling you, they were smoking it once I, once I found them. Um, unfortunately, it was a scoping deal. I hate that for my co-angler. Um, fortunately, I was able to cut a decent check. He did have a fish, so he didn't completely zero. Um, but, you know, we was on the bank for a good five to six hours. And it just, it just wasn't really happening on the bank no sizes on the bank but nonetheless i hope you guys enjoyed the video this was the first stop in the bfls on north lake um, i don't know exactly which all bfls i'll be able to fish i know i have to let, miss at least one in the volunteer division i'm hoping to fish the rest of them but thank you guys for watching please hit the thumbs up button if you enjoy subscribe if you haven't already and until next time catch on big